Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. In this video, I am going to explain to you about strong aloidiosis. And in this video, I am going to explain to you about the symptoms, treatment as well as the life cycle which is which mainly causes strong aloidiasis disease. So coming to the causative agent. So what is a causative agent which causes this disease? So strong aloidiasis is a parasitic disease which is mainly caused by a parasite known as strongyloides stercoralis and it is a parasitic nematode and this disease is called as soil transmitted helminthiasis so why it is called as helminthiasis because the strongyloids stercoralis belongs to helminthes group and why it is called as soil transmitted helminthiasis because uh, this is a disease which is mainly passed from the soil because these worms will be survival only in the soil and when it passes into human beings it will get survived in the uh, small intestine i mean the whole parts of the body because it gets proper food and it gets proper meal in the in the soil as well as the human beings only okay not only human beings but also the mammals which i'm going to explain in the life cycle so when the when the persons or when the human beings or as the mammals will get direct contact to the soils then what happens is that then these worms will get transported from the soil to the human beings and that uh, part of the host will get affected okay so it is called a soil transmitted helminthiasis and this disease of strong aloidiasis can be seen in the regions such as tropical as well as the subtropical countries and coming to the discovery of this strong aloidiasis a french physician known as louis alexis normand in 1876 he gave the total details about the worm i mean about the strong aloid stercoralis he just gave the detailed information upon this worm i mean the total size and the total uh, you know how uh, how this worms will get survived and in that way they gave the total information who this person known as louis alexis normand he gave the total information upon the worm for chief inspector for health who is located in the france and then what happened but he didn't give the total description upon the life cycle right he just gave the structure and what is the function which which this worm will do that only the information which was given by this louis alexis norman so coming to this this happened in the 1876 coming to the 1883 what happened is a german parasitologist known as rudolf lockart he made the initial observation in the life cycle so he gave the total description in the life cycle and then it was named the disease known as strong aloidiasis and he named the worm called strongyloids stercoralis so this was the discovery which has been done on this research of strongyloidiasis so now uh, so and the symptoms and the treatment i am going to say you at the end of the video so now let us learn about the life cycle and this life cycle process you can see in the two forms one is free living cycle and in there is parasitic cycle so let us discuss about what is mean by free living cycle and parasitic cycle after the completion of this life cycle so that you can clearly understand so now let us begin this life cycle and the life cycle will get begins from the human beings i'm going to start this life cycle from the human beings and make sure that the human beings has been directly contacted with the soil i mean playing in the soil or bathing in the dirty water like that like that okay and make sure that the uh, human beings are exposed to this infective filarial form and this infective filarial form uh, will get contaminated i mean i mean it get passed to, to the humans through the contact of skin okay so from the skin it will enter into the small intestine and then it will get transformed into adult filarial form larva okay that's nothing but this form of larva will enter into the human beings uh, through the contact of soil to the skin and from that skin from the part of the skin what happens is that this infective filarial form larva will enter into the small intestine that's nothing but it will get migrated to the small intestine and get transformed into adult filarial form larva where in the small intestine itself and now what happens and if you see here this adult filarial form larva which is present in the small intestine it will get transformed into i mean it will get developed into parasitic adult female in small intestine but it will not get developed into male because here in this in this uh, in this uh, part the males doesn't exist but later the male exist how i'm going to explain you it I, I how i'm going to explain it later so here you have to understand that the males will not get existed only the female will get developed where when this in the small intestine of the human beings okay and now what happens is that this female parasitic adult worms undergoes parthenogenesis process so what is meant by parthenogenesis so parthenogenesis process is a phenomena where the female worms doesn't undergoes fertilization and it forms the embryo directly 
okay normal normally if you see in other other cases of life cycle i mean in other forms of larva what happens the adult it will, it will get transformed into adult stage and then it undergoes mating i mean copulation and then what happens embryo uh, that means that nothing but the eggs will be formed but if you see in the case of this uh, parasitic female adult uh, in, which is present in the small intestine uh, which belongs to strongylides stercoralis what happens is that it undergoes parthenogenesis process that's nothing but it doesn't undergoes any uh, it doesn't undergoes any process of copulation or else any mating it directly forms the eggs you know it doesn't undergo any fertilization process and directly forms the eggs so the eggs get deposited in the intestinal mucosa region remember this process has been totally completed in the small intestine only right hence this eggs will get deposited in the intestinal mucosa and now what happens is that uh, the human beings will excrete fecus material right fecus material fecus material is nothing but the waste material of the body where we all of us know that and we are learning it from lower classes itself and now what happens along with this fecus material the eggs which are present in this intestinal mucosa uh, will get will get transported along with the fecus to the external environment exactly and now here coming to the next part now what happens within the fecus only the hatching of eggs occurs this red color one which i have drawn are called as eggs and the hatching of eggs occurs so when the hatching of eggs occurs what happens uh, it will get developed into rhabditiform larva i mean uh, when it gets hatched the rhabditiform larva will get protruded out from that egg okay and now what happens this rhabditiform larva will get developed into free living adult forms adult worm of larva okay so here the male as well as the female will get existed but if you see in the case of parasitic cycle i mean here in the if you see in the case here the only females will get existed males will not get exist okay so that's only the one thing you have to remember and now what happens so here the rhabditiform form larva will get developed into free living adult worms in the both cases in the male as well as the female both the worms will get developed i mean uh, not only one larva will be present right there will be many larva which will be passed from the many type of eggs i mean many eggs which is present in the fecus in such a way the male worms as well as the female worms will get developed and now what happens the male worm and female worm when it get uh, when it get entered into adult stage then it has a property of undergoing mating that's something but the copulation of fertilization whatever you think it undergoes mating and when it undergoes mating immediately uh, this eggs will be formed right eggs will be protruded out and automatically the eggs which are protruded out undergoes hatching process so when it goes when it gets hatching then immediately again the rhabditiform form larva will get protruded out and here infective filarial larva will get uh, will get developed okay infective filarial form of larva will get developed and now uh, through through the you know contamination process i mean when the fecus material is present in the soil then when the person is directly contacted to the soil then immediately what happens is that uh, you know the skin will get contacted to this larvae to the environment which is present where the larva is present and then what happens this larva will again enter into the human beings and again cause a total life cycle so this is about the life cycle so if you keep this life cycle apart i am going to explain you two points here two main important points so if you see here after the parthenogenesis process what happens eggs will get laid by the parasitic adult female in the small intestine which i have explained you here parthenogenesis process means what i have explained you already that's nothing but where the fertilization process doesn't occur where the formation of embryo occurs directly so that's the parthenogenesis process and then what happens is that this eggs which is depend which is uh, deposited in the intestinal mucosa will get i mean it will get ruptures and directly it forms the adult filarial form larva and that cause of phenomena is known as auto infection right so that's nothing but the parasitic adult female which is present in the small intestine undergoes exhibit the parthenogenesis process in such a way that it forms the eggs right and this eggs get deposited in the intestinal mucosa region right and this eggs will exhibit auto infection process in such a way that when this eggs undergoes hatching immediately the adult filaria form larva will get protruded out and this phenomenon is known as auto infection so by this you can understand that the eggs which has been produced from this parasitic adult female has two properties that's nothing but either it can either it can undergoes auto infection in such a way forming adult filarial form of larva or else it has also a property in such a way that it Uh, it will get transported in the fecus and again begins the total process so it will it will have the two properties either it undergoes auto infection or else either it undergoes the total life cycle and and in some cases the both life cycles occurs 
okay in such a way that the person will get directly affected uh, very speed okay the, uh, i mean it in the form of chronic or else either in the form of any other disease but he will be infected very fastly because uh, the both type of cases has been occurring right so when the both type of cases has been occurring immediately the person will be affected very fastly so that's the one thing you have to remember this is the one thing coming to the second one right and here after the development of the eggs then what happens hatching occurs and rapidly deformed larva will get protruded out as we know as what i have explained to you before and now here what happens this rapidly deformed larva will also exhibit two properties either it forms a total life cycle either it continues a total life cycle like this free living adult forms and again this will get mated and again it forms eggs and again it forms rapidly deformed larva this is the one of the property which continues the life cycle of this rapidly deformed larva this is one of the property coming to the second property is that this rapidly deformed larva will get directly developed into infective filarial form larva okay it doesn't form this total life cycle it either it forms a life cycle or else either it doesn't form the life cycle so it has two properties and that phenomenon is known as direct development development to the filarial form larva is known as direct development so which development the development of the rapidly deformed larva directly to the infective filarial form larva is known as direct development and now what happens this infective filarial form la form larva will enter into human beings by direct contact through the soil and again the total life cycle begins so this is about the life cycle and here i have said you that free living life cycle as well as the parasitic life cycle right free living life cycle is nothing but which this is a life cycle which occurs in the external environment and coming to this parasitic cycle it occurs in the internal environment of the human beings okay hence it is called as parasitic cycle and here it is called as free living cycle because it is free in the environment right so that's only the reason it is called as free living cycle so this is about the life cycle students and yeah, I, I, again i am going to explain to you for your proper understanding so if you see in the case of human beings he, when this uh, make sure that this human beings is directly contact to the soil in such a way that the infected filarial form larva will get enter into the human beings and then it gets migrated into the small intestine which one this infective filarial form which has been entered into the human beings it will get migrated to the small intestine and how it gets migrated to the small intestine it's a basic thing which you can know that's nothing but when it enters into the skin immediately uh, it will enter into the blood stream and we know that the blood stream will get passed through throughout all the body parts of the human beings and immediately in the same way this migrated into the small intestine because the blood will also enter into the small intestine right it will touch us to the small intestine and hence this will get migrated to the small intestine and then it get transformed into adult filarial form larva and now what happens this will get uh, developed into female parasitic adult female larva okay and then this exhibits a parthenogenesis process and when it exhibits parthenogenesis process immediately the eggs will get deposited in the intestinal mucosa and of this eggs will have will exhibit two type of properties in such a way that it will get uh, developed directly into adult filarial form larva that, that's nothing but the hatching of egg egg occurs and forms adult filarial form larva and this phenomenon is known as auto infection this is one of the property coming to the second property this eggs will get uh, will get protruded out in the form of fecus along with the fecus which has been excreted by the human beings and now the eggs which is present in this fecus will undergo hatching process in such a way that it forms the rapidly deformed larva and now this rapidly deformed larva will again undergo to uh, again undergo to exhi it exhibits two type of properties one is it will get directly developed into infective filarial form larva by the phenomena known as direct development or else it continues the life cycle again in such a way that it forms the, again the infective filarial form larva and then what happens again this infective filarial form larva will enter into the human beings by the direct contact through the soil so this is the life cycle students and come into the symptoms respiratory problems such as low flow syndromes abdominal pain diarrhea continuous constipation meningitis tb okay these are the normal symptoms tuberculosis these are the normal symptoms which you can see in the person who is infected with this disease known as strongly diseases coming to the treatment ivermectin and albendazole and thiabendazole so here ivermectin is a drug which plays a major role which continue which can definitely cure this strongly diseases and albendazole and thiabendazole are the normal drugs which will be given for every person who is infected with this any type of parasitic disease okay so this is about the strongly diseases students so hope you understood this video i hope you understood my explanation and if you like this video just do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video please comment in the comment box i am going to clarify your doubts immediately